Welcome to the workbench and welcome to another episode of Wheels Wings TV. Today we have the 172nd scale M41 Walker Bulldog from Armory Models. Let's have a look. First sprue, we have our turret, mantlet, very nicely done, very clean, a little bit of a, a little bit of a bump in shipping there, so yeah, got a little, you know, no fault of theirs, a couple little chunks taken out, but we can patch those up, very clean. This is one of their newer kits, and you can tell a lot, lot less flash compared to some of uh, Armory's other releases. So they're obviously getting their molding dialed in a little bit better. Very fine details around the hatch, nice little bolts, all the raised ribbing on all the toolboxes and stowage boxes, and some very fine levers and Hatches on those plates there. Not a single sign of an ejector pin. Interesting. Very nice, very cleanly molded. Aside from a little bit of a, a bump in transit, but we can't fault them on that. Next, we got our tracks, link and length style. Little bit of flash on this one, but not anywhere super important, at least not covering all of our individual links. Uh, looks like we got a uh, little bit of a sink mark in the middle of each one of the rubber pads. But not on the major runs, so wouldn't be hard to fill that in with a little tiny bit of putty or some sprue goo. Or, as armor modelers are apt to, just slap some mud on it. Clean, very sharp. Those look like they should go together just fine. Very nice for 70 second scale. Next, we got our various little parts bump stops and suspension arms. Exhaust pipes, Pioneer tools, travel lock at our gun barrel. Little bit of a mold line, but at least it's in one piece. We got our muzzle brake. The end has a hole, but we'll have to drill out the side of the brake. Get some. Fortunately, a few little sink marks in the center of some of these pieces. But imagine they're not using super high pressure injection. So, and most of these parts are going to be low down on the suspension, so I wouldn't worry about those two too much. Nice little jerry cans in their, in their holders with a little strap. That's a nice little detail. too bad looking. We got our hull parts, you know, flat pack style so to speak, upper, lower, left, right. Very, very nice grill molded into the back rear of the hull. Get a wash in there and that'll look really nice. Nice 
these little bolts and hinges around the little filler hatches. There's a nice bolt detail around the final drive and the idler wheels and the return rollers. Some very nice little hatch detail on the bottom of the hull. Little, little bit of flash, but not too bad. Nice one-piece fenders. One would argue that they're a little bit thick, but you know, I mean, if you're so inclined, you could thin those down. But for what we get, those look quite nice. And yeah, once again, not a not a hint of an ejector pin mark anywhere. And even actually some clever sprue placement. So we get traditional kind of side mounted, but on the front here, they've kind of done an under underneath attachment. So that's on the gluing face as opposed to the exposed thin edge there. So that's something nice to see. The mainstream manufacturers are starting to catch on to that. So nice to see the smaller guys copying that. That looks really nice. And our wheels. Very nice bolt detail in the hubs. Even on the even on the idler wheels, some very, very fine detail down inside the wheel there. Little little bit of flash around the edge, but nothing major. I mean even even the best model kits still have a seam line around the wheels, so that's not something we can always get away from. Sprockets look nice and sharp, although our sprue attachments are right on the end of the teeth, so we'll have to be careful there. You know, that's not a good... Most, a lot of people will say, why put them there? Well, it sure as heck beats having it in between the teeth. I have seen that on kits, and that is not fun to clean up. So, lesser of two evils there. Just be careful. And then, nice little definitive ridge between the rubber tire and the wheel. So, that should make painting easy. Yeah, those look quite nice. Get some resin as well. We've got a very delicately molded 50 caliber machine gun. So you have to be very, very careful getting that out. Making sure you don't break that barrel. That is very nice. It's always nice when manufacturers kind of admit to limitations. It's like, yeah, there's no way we were gonna get this done in plastic, so we're gonna do this in resin. But yeah, paint that up, and that's, and the Walker Bulldog uh, very characteristically has that 50 cal mounted way up high on a pintle on the top of the turret, so something that's definitely gonna be seen, so. That's gonna look very nice. And of course, we got the the pintle and the uh, the ammunition box. Browning M2 HB. So that was probably 3D printed master and then cast off. That looks very nice. And some photo etch. So we've got some detail parts for the machine gun, the actual cradle, the handles and whatnot. Got the handles and the caps for our jerry cans. And some assorted handles and whatnot. Detail parts for the tank itself. Looks like we get some per periscope guards or headlight guards. taking care of all those really fine details. Very nice. 
nice. And our instructions. Standard black and white laser on plain old paper. M41A1 and A2 Walker Bulldog. Nice big sprue map with all of our parts numbers because of course they are not numbered on the sprue. Looks like we will be using everything, nothing grayed out for not for use. As well as our photo etch and our resin. So start off putting all of our suspension components onto the lower hull. Might have liked to have seen this a bit bigger. You got a lot of lines and a lot of numbers going on here, but take your time. You should have a problem there. Got our tail lights and towing hitches and various other details on the rear hull. Suspension components for the opposite side. Add our upper hull to our lower hull with our rear plates. Then a whole bunch of photo etch pieces going into place on the back deck, including all the little lifting handles for our engine hatches. More little details and our headlights going into the forward hull. And we've got our wheels going on. Right side, left side, then our tracks, hopefully we, everything fits exactly as it should and we don't have, uh, we don't end up short a link. Extras is never a bad thing, but when you run out, that can be a problem. Getting ahead of ourselves. Front hull. There we go. Fenders with various bracketry, all in photo etch going in place. Our various stowage boxes, our exhausts. Uh, shields, then we can do our wheels and our tracks, got our turret going together, upper and lower halves, looks like we should be able to pose the barrel if we're careful with our gluing, mantlet barrel with the muzzle brake, which Make sure you want to drill that out a little bit. Various little photo etch handles and tie downs over the turret with some of our pioneer tools. You can pose our hatch open so if the little 70 second scale figure you could stick them in there. Got our very very petite 50 cal resin machine gun with the photo etch mounting hardware. Got our turret bustle our jerry cans, some more fine little handles and tie downs to go in place, and we got a finished Walker Bulldog. Pretty straightforward. Wouldn't mind seeing this maybe a little bit bigger special other break this up and do another step or maybe make that a little bit bigger just like that can get a little bit confusing but other than that it's 
long as you check things off as you go, especially when it comes to all the little photo etch parts, you should be okay. And our color printed color guide. First vehicle, M41A2, Vietnam 1968. Headquarters company of the 3rd Armored Cavalry. Or a slightly more colorful vehicle, M41A1 of the 34th Infantry Regiment in the Panama Canal in 1962, delinquent. And of course the Walker Bulldogs were used by many different countries, so if there's a particular one, find some appropriate markings, but standard American, any color you want as long as it's olive drab, should look pretty good. And the little decal sheet, which mostly caters to that uh, Panama-based vehicle, but very, very thin on the carrier film. Decals aren't overly thick. Color looks really good. Nothing out of register. Shouldn't have any issues with those. So, the new 172nd Walker Bulldog from Armory. A nicely detailed little kit of a relatively overlooked American tank. The, uh, it saw more service with allied nations than it did with the Americans themselves. So, more often you'll see it with different markings other than the classic white star. Thank you very much to Armory Models for sending this along for us to have a look at. If you guys like to see more content like this, give us a like, hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much. We'll catch you next time.